Hello, welcome to our latest Queen Elizabeth Scholarship presentation from the McMaster Health Forum at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. I'll provide you with a quick rundown of the McMaster Health Forum, the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program, and the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program here at the Forum. I will then turn it over to our scholar presenter who will talk about their experiences. The McMaster Health Forum aims to be the leading hub for improving health outcomes through collective problem solving. We harness information, convene stakeholders, and prepare action-oriented leaders to act as an agent of change by empowering stakeholders. The Canadian Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Scholarships, or QES for short, is managed through a unique partnership with the Universities Canada, the Rideau Hall Foundation, Community Foundations of Canada, and Canadian Universities. This program is made possible with financial support from the Government of Canada, provincial governments, and the private sector. The purpose of the program is to activate a dynamic community of young global leaders to create lasting impacts both at home and abroad through cross-cultural exchanges encompassing international education, discovery and inquiry, and professional experiences. The Master Health Forum had a previous Queen Elizabeth Scholarship program. We are very proud to have been selected as one of 20 Canadian institutions to host a second round of scholars. The new program ran from 2018 to the end of 2021, but was extended to the end of 2023. The focus of the McMaster Health Forum's current Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program is strengthening health and social systems. Our scholars have contributed to strengthening health and social systems and have become part of our large and growing network of health and social system leaders. During our original Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program, we hosted 14 incoming scholars and we sent three outgoing scholars to work with our partners. We also had an additional 44 outgoing interns who traveled abroad to work with partners of the Master Health Forum. For our current Queen Elizabeth Scholarship Program on Strengthening Health and Social Systems, we have hosted seven incoming scholars and we have sent abroad 24 outgoing interns who have worked with our partners around the world. Our scholar presenter today is Margaret, who is a graduate student in the Master of Public Health program at McMaster University. Margaret's research interests include aging health, chronic illness, refugee and migrant health, and equitable research methods. During her internship, Margaret hoped to develop an understanding of the inner workings of public health organizations, as well as the process involved in program evaluation, while also gaining an understanding of global and public health in the Australian context. Margaret, over to you. Hi everyone, today I'm going to be walking you through my experience as a Queen Elizabeth Scholar at the Sachs Institute, which is based in Sydney, Australia. Now before we get started, I wanted to take the time to introduce myself. So my name is Margaret Lowe, I use she, her pronouns, and I am currently a second year Master of Public Health student at McMaster University. Now my program is really unique in that it allows individuals to pursue a thesis or a series of practicums, and for myself, I chose the practicum stream. And one of my placements was fulfilled through the scholarship at the Sachs Institute. As a side, in terms of my academic background, I recently graduated from Queen's University as a psychology and biology graduate. And separate from this, I thought it would be important to discuss some of my interests, many of which were met and touched upon through my placement with the Sachs Institute. So these included things like health equity, community health, aging populations, and public health. So now that you know a little bit about me, I wanted to take the time to walk you through my placement, some of the lessons that I've learned along the way, as well as some of the great experiences that I've had as a result of the Queen Elizabeth Scholarship. So first, before I get into the nitty gritty of my practicum and my placement, I thought it would be really important to kind of describe what the Sachs Institute is all about. So to give you a bit of background, the Sachs Institute is located in Sydney, Australia, and was developed in honor of Dr. Sidney Sachs. In Australia, Dr. Sachs has been admired for his use of research in creating and developing health policies, and as a result, the Sachs Institute has worked to do much of the same thing. The Sachs Institute considers itself an evidence specialist, which works to improve the health and well-being of Australians, and to do so, it consists of several departments, which include the Evaluate Team, the Evidence Connect Team, as well as so many more. 
Now, my role primarily involved me working within the Evaluate team, and this team specifically works to identify the ways in which policies or programs work. To do so, evaluations are done to help suggest improvements and to optimize outcomes. Ultimately, the Evaluate team works to achieve four main goals. They aim to plan evaluations, conduct evaluations, train others on how to perform evaluations, and optimize the impact of evaluation findings with stakeholders. Now, the Evaluate team allowed me to work with some amazing professionals who taught me a lot about public health and community health within an Australian context. And the projects that I worked on were really diverse in nature and ranged from community work to policy analysis. Now, throughout my time in Australia, I worked on four main projects. The first project I worked on was targeted at redesigning the Australian Sun Safety Program. With Australia having some of the highest levels of ultraviolet radiation in the world, skin cancer is a huge health concern. Sun safety programs have been developed as a result, but policymakers have recognized that implementation of these sun safety programs have reduced over time. Now, the Sachs Institute was recruited to perform a realist review with intention of informing policymakers on how to improve the sun safety program so that it's better implemented in school settings. Now, this project was really great to be a part of as it allowed me to evaluate a specific initiative, but also allowed me to understand the components that play a role in policy development. Now, the second project I worked on was focused on determining whether the concept of collaborative care could be expanded across Australia. Now, the concept of collaborative care was created as a means of helping remote Australian towns manage the many healthcare challenges that they face. And as of yet, it's only been implemented in five remote communities. So this project required a review to be conducted with intention of informing the relevant stakeholders on how to scale collaborative care to more communities across Australia. Now, with my first two projects being research focused, my supervisor really wanted me to gain hands on experience working with local health units. Local health units recognized that identification of those experiencing family, domestic and sexual violence was not easy. However, they instead realized that if primary health care physicians were equipped with the skills to recognize abuse, providing support to these abuse victims was often done more efficiently. Through recognizing this, a pilot project was developed to educate primary healthcare physicians about the telltale signs of abuse, and this project has been implemented over the course of a few years. With that said, consultations needed to happen with local health units to understand the efficacy of the program so far, so I was involved in these consultations and had a chance to work with local health units to see their progress. Now, the final project that I worked on was that of team education, and I had the pleasure of working on a variety of reviews throughout my practicum alongside Annika, another QES scholar, and we were able to introduce the use of a tool called Covidence. Covidence helps to streamline review processes, and the Sachs Institute recognized how fast and effective this tool was. As a result of how useful it was, Annika and I were asked to present a Covidence tutorial to the Sachs Institute during a lunch and learn. Ultimately, these four projects were really great learning experiences. Content-wise, it was great to learn about some of the pressing healthcare issues within Australia. But more than this, my time at the Sachs Institute taught me about cross-cultural collaboration. This opportunity allowed me to work with Australians, New Zealanders, and individuals with a variety of academic backgrounds. It was a really great experience to learn from individuals with a breadth of experience, and this feeds into one of my next lessons, which was that this experience taught me the ability to broaden my public health perspectives. I had the chance to work with program evaluation experts, knowledge brokers, local health practitioners, and this taught me a lot about the multifaceted nature of public health and social and health systems. Finally, I had the ability to learn tangible public health research skills, in my time with the Sachs Institute, I worked on four projects, all of which were conducted within a three-month time span. This was a really fast-paced environment, which helped to shed a light on the urgency of certain public health issues within the Australian community. It also allowed me to gain both quantitative and qualitative research skills by consulting with local health units and conducting literature reviews and performing data analyses. Overall, conducting these research projects taught me an immense amount about the intricate nature of public health and the intricacies involved in improving health systems. 
It opened my eyes to the world of public health and the processes involved in benefiting the health of communities. Now, separate from some of the amazing work projects that I was fortunate enough to be a part of, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the location and learning that came with conducting an internship abroad. Now, as previously mentioned, the Sachs Institute is based in Sydney, Australia. Broadly, Australia is the only country in the world that covers an entire continent. As a result, one can underestimate just how big Australia is. Australia is the sixth largest country and isn't directly joined to another country. With that said, Australia is one of the world's most ethnically diverse countries, bringing in a rich history. More specifically, I was located in Sydney, and Sydney has a general population that is greater than 5 million people and is home to some amazing architectural sites and world heritage sites. The Sachs Institute's home base was in Sydney, however, many individuals within Sachs were working remotely. As a result, I was able to work on projects remotely and had the chance to explore different cities within Australia. This was a great experience to become comfortable with navigating new spaces and developing an understanding for the diverse climates that Australia has to offer. Australia has a variety of climates, which range from temperate, arid, to tropical. Now, one of the first destinations that I was able to visit was on a weekend trip, and here I had the chance to explore the capital of Australia known as Canberra. I got to visit some national buildings like the National Library of Australia, which you can see on the top left, the National Museum of Australia, and their National Science Center known as Questacon, which is that image of the moon. I also had the chance to see an Australian comedian, which I had been following prior to this trip, and that was such a great experience. This trip was really great in demonstrating and showing me Australia's culture and history, and it was really exciting to explore Australia's capital. After spending some more time in Sydney, I thought it would be nice to explore the tropical climate of Australia, and Brisbane and the surrounding area like the Gold Coast and the Sunshine Coast were next on my list. Here, I had the chance to see a co-worker of mine at the Sachs Institute while she was visiting her hometown. I also got to visit some family friends, go surfing, visit the Australian Zoo and catch a glimpse of the famous Irwins, and get a taste of the Australian desert through a live action show called Outback Spectacular. Now this portion of the trip was really great in helping to connect with some local Australians and helped me to explore some of the amazing outdoors that Australia has to offer. Going more north, I traveled to Cairns, where I was able to visit some of Australia's more popular world heritage sites. This included the Daintree Rainforest and the Great Barrier Reef, where I saw some amazing animals, as well as some of the creepy crawlies that Australia is known for. The Daintree region is also known for its rich Aboriginal culture, and this trip helped me to gain a lot of insight into Aboriginal history and their traditions. Cairns was a lot smaller than Sydney and Brisbane, and was full of tourists like myself, which made for a very different atmosphere than Brisbane and Sydney. And this destination was really nature-focused, and also exposed me to Aboriginal cultures within Australia, which I found to be really eye-opening. Finally, as I was traveling back to Canada, I had a layover in New Zealand's South Island. I spent a few days there, driving around the island, and experiencing its amazing sights and weather. You could be stuck in a blizzard and drive for an hour only to be in 25 degree weather and it was such a great experience to see that change in climate. I had the ability to see some wild seals, alpacas, lots and lots of sheep and experience some local adrenaline inducing activities like New Zealand's famous jet boat. This was a great way to end the trip and help me to truly appreciate Australasian culture. Now, overall, this experience was so incredibly eye-opening and allowed me to grow in so many different ways. Being away from home with the time difference that there was required me to become incredibly resilient, resourceful, and independent in ways that I couldn't imagine. Now, this opportunity helped me to explore parts of the world that I never would have thought possible, and I'm forever grateful for this opportunity. With that said, I just wanted to take the time to thank everyone who made this trip possible. Thank you to the McMaster Health Forum, the Queen Elizabeth Scholars Program. Thank you to all the friends and family who helped me along the way. Thank you to all the friends and family that I made along the way. And thank you to all of you for listening.